Good morning, church. Welcome this Sunday morning to church in your house. Uh, it's so exciting that we get to worship God continually, no matter what the circumstances around us are. So we are going to worship God this morning. We're going to get into the word and hear a powerful message today. So let's just get our hearts ready. I know as I was just praying and choosing the songs to sing this morning, God was speaking of how good he is, how powerful he is, but also who he makes us, who he calls us to be. So as we sing this morning, as we worship him, let's pour everything out to honor him this morning. But let's remember and recall who he has uh, declared and commanded that we are. We are his sons and daughters, saints. So let's just recall how good our God is this morning and let's praise him. Now is buried beneath my shame. Yes, Lord, we 
just praise you. God, that you set us free. Lord, that day, Jesus, when you died on that cross, you defeated darkness and then three days later rose from the grave. Oh, what happened that day when we were set free? We praise you for it, Lord. We praise you. Let's just fix our attention on Him and all that He's done for us. God, You are so good. Let's get lost in worshipping Him this morning. And higher than the mountains say it our faith And stronger than the power of His This one thing remains, yes, Lord. This one thing remains. Cause your love never fails, never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, never gives up, it never runs out on me. Never fails, never gives up, and never runs out on me. Your love, and on and on and on and on it goes. Yeah, it overwhelms and satisfies my soul. And I never, ever have to be afraid. Cause this one thing, it remains, yes, this one thing, it remains, oh, your love. Cause your love never fails, never gives, it never
And in Acts 16, we read about Silas and Paul in prison, chained, but yet they decide, they choose to praise God. They don't know if they're going to get out of there. They don't know what's next, but they know that our God knows, that our God is bigger than circumstances, and that no matter what was going on for them, the best thing, the only thing they could do was praise God. Let's take, take that this morning, learn from that and embrace that, that no matter what's going on, our God is good. There is so much happening in the world right now, so much happening in people's lives right now, but our God is still good, still on the throne and still worthy of our praise. Lord, you are so worthy. We praise you. Here and now, Lord, we praise you. Praise you, God. Death claimed its victory. The King of Love had given up his life. Yeah, so he could stay in history. And there on the cross, they made for sin new. For every curse, his blood atoned.
sky lit up, a flash of light breaking through. With no was lost, he crossed eternity. The King of Life was on the moon. In the dark and cold tomb, where our Lord was laid, one miraculous break with forever. Our King, to our King, oh hell, you cried, yeah, yeah, oh hell, you cried, oh hell, you cried, oh hell, you cried, oh, let's just lift our song to Him.
around me with a song of deliverance from my enemy till all my fears are gone and I'm no longer a slave to fear oh I am a child God, I'm no longer a slave to fear. Oh, I am a child of God. And from my mother's womb. You have chosen me and love has called my name and I've been born again into your family your blood flows through my veins and I'm no We're surrounded by the Father's arms. And I am surrounded by the arms of the Father. And I am surrounded by songs of deliverance. Child of God, and 
joy it is that as we get to know God more and more, He, I guess it feels like He takes us into more and more freedom as we come to recognize His truth and the power that He has. We recognize more and more the freedom that we really have. No longer trapped in fear because we are His sons and daughters. What a joy it is to know that. God, we thank you that you are so good to us. Your sons and daughters, Lord, you love us so dearly. You are so good. We never want to stop praising you. Never stop singing of your goodness, God. We love you, Lord. We're not going to stop worshiping our God. We're going to head into the Word of God. Get prepared. Get your hearts ready. Don't go anywhere. Hello, church. How are you? I, I love the words to that song. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. And those words could quite easily also say, I'm no longer a slave to sin. I'm a child of God. You see, a child of God is in fact just has the same DNA as the Father. So we have the same DNA as our Heavenly Father. We've been born again, born of the Spirit, the Bible says. Um, we have a divine nature. That's what I preached on last week. And I just really want to quickly do a, a quick recap on what I spoke about. Do you remember that, that Peter was insistent? He says, look, I've, I've repeatedly told you these things and I'm going to continue to tell you while I'm alive, although I think I'm going to die soon because God has revealed this to me. So I want you to continue um, to be reminded of these things after my death. And what he spoke about was this, that he, we had a divine nature. We had a, a nature just like God's. So we've been made brand new. We're wholly on the inside. Holy and blameless, the Bible says. Um, we're holy and righteous, the Bible says. We've been made after the image of God in true holiness and righteousness. And it also says, Peter was also said that um, God has given us everything we need to live a godly life. So those two things, having a, a divine nature and... Um, and having all that we need to live a godly life, this should persuade you to do these things. He said, I want you to add to your faith um, virtue. And virtue is just like moral excellence, like it's excellence in every aspect of life. And so we, can, we discussed that last week, what that, what that actually meant. And then uh, add to that knowledge of God and His ways, and self-control, steadfastness, or patient endurance, godliness, brotherly affection, and love. So we're to add all of these things to our faith, knowing that we have this brand new nature and we can live um, the way that God wants us to live. So th that's so important. I think people don't live for God for a number of reasons. They might think, firstly, 
um, that they can't. It's impossible to. And, and Peter was very clear that you can live that way. Other people um, have a misguided understanding of grace and they will they will say and argue that you can live as you please and and God is is not upset with that way of life and certainly God um, does love us and he loves us unconditionally and we're holy and blameless and righteous in his sight but he wants us to live a holy life so that we're not um, hoodwinked into into um, hardening our hearts towards God that we get um, isolated from God and, and turn away from God. So there's this uh, repeated um, encouragement from Jesus in the book of Revelation, how he says, you know, those who overcome will inherit the crown of life. And then we see it in the author of Hebrews, um, who gives this constant reminder, because of all that God has done for you, live a life right to the very end. And we see that also in the, in the teaching of Paul and, and James and John. So all of the epistles, that is the letters that, that these heroes of the faith, these apostles wrote, um, who had a, had a close relationship with Jesus Christ, they all encouraged us to live a holy life. And so I just really want to build off the back of that and uh, just finishing the recap. He says, do all those things, build godly character, in other words, because of your divine nature and because of all God has given you the ability to be able to um, live a godly life. He says, do these things and you will never fall away. And that's the heart of, of Peter's teaching. Then God will give you a grand entrance entrance into an eternal kingdom. So now let's look at um, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 1 onwards. Peter says this, This is my second letter to you, dear friends, and in both of them I have tried to stimulate your wholesome thinking and refresh your memory. I want you to remember what the Holy, Script, Holy Prophets said long ago. And what our Lord and Savior commanded through your apostles. Most importantly, I want to remind you in, that in the last days, scoffers will come mocking the truth and following their own desires. And we see that both in the church and outside the church. People living life the way that they please, any way that they please. And that they will scoff against people who want to live a holy life. They will say, what happened to the promise that Jesus is coming again? From before the times of our ancestors, everything has remained the same since the world was first created. They deliberately forgot that God made the heavens long ago by the word of his command. And he brought the earth out from the water and surrounded it with water. Then he used the water to destroy the ancient world with a mighty flood. And uh, you would know the story of Noah. And what happened there? Then in verse 7, it says, And by the same word, the present heavens and earth have been stored up for fire, for destruction. They are being kept for the day of judgment when ungodly people will be destroyed. But you must not forget this one thing, dear friends. A day is like a thousand years to the Lord and a thousand years is like a day. The Lord isn't really being slow about his promise, as some people think. What's the promise? The promise is that Jesus Christ is going to come back. And when he comes back, he's going to come back as a judge. And he's going to judge the world. And unfortunately, the ungodly are going to be destroyed. But we can read from verse 9 that this is not God's plan. This isn't what he wants. He wants all people to come to know him. In verse 9, it says, the Lord isn't really being slow about this promise, as some people think. No, he is being patient for your sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed. We have to be so careful when we read this. He does not want anyone to be destroyed. 
So those people that hate you or ridicule you or even mock you because of your faith or, you know, have done nasty things to you, understand this, that Jesus loves all people and his desire is that not one person should, be, should perish or be destroyed. But he wants everyone to repent. That means to turn from doing life your own way and going God's way. Jesus isn't slow in coming back. He's not slow in returning. And many people at this time, many prophets are, are claiming that these are the very end of days and that Christ is coming back probably in our lifetime. I, I don't know whether that to be true or not. I, I haven't received anything like that from from God and and the Bible clearly says that we won't know the time. Um, Jesus will come back and no one will know that time and it's not for people to know. But whether we're in the final days and whether God will come back during my lifetime or not, you know, isn't of concern to me. What what's of concern to me is that I'm in my very last of days. And I want to make the most of my days here on earth. I, I don't just want to live life and, and live in such a way that I don't follow the instructions in the Bible, that I live differently from the Bible and, and, um, and, and miss out on what God wants for me. I know what it's like to sin. And I know what it's like to go on sinning as a Christian. And what I find is that, that it, it brings separation between me and God. And God doesn't want that. He says that if we um, obey his commands, we will remain in his love. And it's not that God's love is withdrawn from us. It's that we withdraw from God. And our heart gets hardened. Remember the encouragement that Peter said. That if we would live a godly life, if we would develop godly character, we wouldn't fall away and that we would receive um, God's crown. We would receive eternal life. And remember, this is God's plan for you. He wants you to have a relationship with him and who wouldn't want that? Um, so here we see, you know, Peter in the last week's sermon, he's saying, look, I've given you everything that you need to live a godly life. And I've given you a divine nature, so live godly. And now he's ramping it up and he's saying, look, I want you to live a godly life. Um, and this is the reason for it. Um, Jesus is coming back. This is the motivation. And then he says this, but the day of the Lord will come as unexpectedly as a thief. And Jesus said that, if the owner of a house knew the time that his house was going to be broken into, he wouldn't have allowed it to be broken into. And so it's so important that we're, we're ready. Jesus tells four parables, one after the other, making sure that we would be ready for the return of Jesus. And I, I want to be met with, well done, good and faithful servant. I, I, I don't want to just like enter into king, the kingdom of God, like, like um, Jesus says, that some will enter like um, being pulled through the flames um, and that, they, that, they, that, that um, they won't receive a reward, um, which is so tragic. <laughs> they enter heaven, but it's, it's just by the skin of their teeth. I, I don't want anyone I know to be like that. I, I don't want people to gamble with their salvation. Uh, but what's more troubling is that people think that somehow living for themselves is going to bring about a better life. Uh, I'm telling you, I know what life was like before knowing God and I know what it's like afterwards. Uh, people are in deception. Why would you want um, misery in your life? Why would you want unforgiveness? Why would you want anger and bitterness and all these other things that come through living a life according to our old way of life? Who wants that for their life? I, I just want the fruits of the Spirit overflowing in my life. 
It's the, the greatest life that you can ever live. And don't let anyone convince you that there's some better way. I know the devil for, for many years has been trying to convince me that of that. But I tell you what, my life is just way better because God is in it. Then it says, Then the heavens will pass away with a terrible noise and the very elements themselves will disappear in fire. That is both heaven and hell will, uh, heaven and earth will be destroyed by fire and the earth and everything on it will be found to deserve judgment. Since everything around us is going to be destroyed like this, what holy and godly lives you should live. This is a word not coming from your pastor. This is a word coming from Peter. And like I said last week, no one knew Jesus and captured the heart of Jesus like his best friend. And Peter was like the best friend of Jesus when he walked this earth. I think he conveys the heart of what Jesus would say to us. And if you don't believe that, just read uh, Revelation 2 and 3 and what Jesus had to say to the churches um, and just the warning that he gave those churches. It's so important that we live a godly life. And uh, I love what the Amplified Version um, says that it, it, it expounds on what holy means. It's a, a, like a daily life set apart as a believer. And then godliness or, or uh, godly lives um, displaying profound reverence towards an awesome God. So holiness means to live set apart from the world. It, it really is the fruit of repentance. Uh, so when we decide to live God's way, that means that we no longer live the way of the world. We live set apart from that. So we forgive people. We um, go the extra mile, turn the other cheek. We give generously. Um, we, we just live different lives. We, we don't deliberately keep on going on sinning after we've um, received Christ. And, um, but we live a godly life. So that's what it means to be holy. And what it means to be godly is, is just to pay absolute reverence towards an awesome God. Like, you know, I, I could come to church and just pay lip service to God <laughs> and um, I could not worship God with all my heart. I could just, you know, go, oh my goodness, here's another song, whatever. But, but God wants us to live a godly life. He wants us to, to get to know God and he wants us to get to know him and know him well. He wants us to live in awe of him. And never lose our wonder of him and, uh, and his goodness. He, he wants a, a genuine and sincere relationship with us. So then in verse 12, it says, Looking forward to that day. Uh, lo sorry, looking forward to the day of God and hurrying it along. On that day, he will set the heavens on fire and the elements will melt away in the, in the flames. But we are looking forward to the new heavens and the new earth, he has promised a world filled with God's righteousness. How awesome is that going to be? No more anger, no more strife, no more bitterness, no more division, just pure love. And, um, uh, you know, I, I just love that. I, I love that we could, we could just all get along with one another. There'd be no more uh, prejudices there would just be this pure love, uh, pure righteousness. We would, we would um, live right before God. And, and I can't wait for that day. Um, then in verse 14, it says, And so, dear friends, again, he's, he's saying, because of all of this, while, while you are waiting for these things to happen, make every effort to be found living peaceful lives that are pure and blameless in his sight. That's my encouragement to you. How are you going to live differently as a Christian? Well, this is what Peter would encourage you to, to do, to live a blameless and pure life in his sight. 
And then in verse 15, it says, And remember our Lord's patience. What is his patience? He's delaying him coming back to earth because he desires that none shall perish, none shall be destroyed, but all come into a knowledge of God and be saved. And saved from what? The punishment of sin. So remember this. Remember our Lord's patience. Our Lord's patience gives people time to be saved. So it's so important, I think, for us to take heed of this and to be as vocal as we can um, in bringing people into the kingdom of God, in sharing good, the good news, not sharing um, bad things or arguing with people over pointless things that really don't matter into eternity, but just but just but just bringing the good news to people, telling people that God is for them and that he loves them and that there is this day coming when Jesus is going to return and and be urgent in your response. Uh, I don't want anyone to, to perish just like Jesus doesn't. And um, it's his desire that we would pray for all people and that we would wear his ambassadors and God is making his appeal through us. It's up to us to go into all the world and make disciples. So make that the thing that drives you in life. I, I know I, I, I've really got such a heart for the lost. I don't want to see anyone um, perish. I don't want to see anyone destroyed. I don't want to see anyone um, be punished for their sins. I, that does not delight me at all. That does not make me happy at all. Um, so my desire is that people would know God and that my life lived out would be so attractive to people. Then it says, this is what our beloved Paul also wrote to you with the wisdom God gave him. Speaking of these things in all of his letters, some of his comments are hard to understand. <laughs> That's true. I wish he used a lot more punctuation. It's like he, he just went from one thing to the, the next. But um, I, I believe that God will help us um, to understand the Bible if we, if we ask him to do that. And those who are ignorant and unstable have twisted his letters to mean something quite different, just as they do with other parts of Scripture, and this will result in their destruction. You already know these things, dear friends, so be on guard. Then you will not be carried away by the errors of these wicked people and lose your own secure footing. Rather, you must grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All glory to him, both now and forever. Amen. This sees out the letter um, that Peter wrote to committed believers. And his, he was insistent that they be faithful right to the very end. And so how do you live a holy life? First of all, I think what I shared last week is so important. Firstly, you've got to know that you can live a holy life and that you can live blameless. And it really comes out of an understanding of who we are in Christ. The devil would convince you that you're, you're no good, that you'll never be able to break free from sin, that you're always going to struggle, that you're not good enough, that you you're not talented enough, you don't know enough, you, you're not good enough for God. And they're the lies of the evil one. But one, when we come out of agreement with those lies and we see who we are in God and we see that we have this brand new divine nature, we see that we are, we have the same spiritual DNA as God, we will know the truth and the truth will set us free from slavery to sin. And so you can live a life set free from sin. So it's so important to embrace who you are in Christ if you're going to live a godly life. Secondly, some people choose to live in rebellion to God. And I just encourage you, if, you're, if you um, received Christ as your Savior and, you, and you're hedging your bets, you, know, you, you want a bit of this world, a bit of God, don't do that. I tell you, don't do that because there's coming a day when your faith will come under fire. 
there'll be a, a, you know, something in your life that will be a defining moment. And I spoke with a beautiful woman today um, who was struggling with um, a diagnosis of cancer. And that was a really turning point. And she was saying, you know, for many people, they've said that they would slump in a corner. Uh, but this beautiful woman said no, that she, she rose up and she, she rose up in faith. So, you know, there's defining moments in our life. And if you're going to hedge your bets and you don't know the goodness of God and you're not walking in his peace and you're not walking in his love and you don't have the overflow of the Holy Spirit in your life, when things get tough and they will get tough, you're, you're likely to give up. You're likely to say, God, where are you? And begin um, berating God and treating God like as your a servant. And uh, that's not the way God wants things. He wants us to, to love him and to, to know him. And I want to say to you, if you think that this world will offer you something better than God can, remember what Adam and Eve had in the Garden of Eden. They only had what was good and they were going to live forever. And all the devil gave them, they already had knowledge of good. They, all that the devil gave them was knowledge of evil. And when that occurred, um, they, they were estranged from the love of God. And then, and then sin came in the life and then in, into the world and brokenness. And so brokenness is a result of sin. But we've been born again and we've got this brand new nature so we can live differently. And God's ways work and they lead to the abundant life. And so if you're living that way, thinking that the world has something better to offer you, take heed to what Peter says. Jesus is coming back. So even let the fear of judgment be a motivator to you. But more so than that, understand you're in deception. <laughs> The, the ways of the world are not what better than the ways of God. And I want you to, to understand that. I would give up everything that I owned um, if, I was, if I had to purchase my, my salvation. Nothing in this world can compare with, with the abundant life that you can have in, in Jesus Christ. And so we get the opportunity that if we will come under the Lordship of God, if we will make him Lord of our life and no longer live for ourselves and, um, and, and submit our lives unto him. The Bible says that if we would submit our life to God, resist the devil, he will flee from us. And I know it's a battle for some. It was a battle for me in some aspects of my life. But where I see breakthrough is when I, when I understood that I was in a battle and you might think, okay, well, that's a lifelong battle. I, I, I'm, I've got battle scars, Lionel, from fighting these things. But if you understand that you can win the battle and, and God has given you the tools to win the battle, you just have to stand in them and the devil will flee from you. Then you can approach things differently. Understand that he hates anyone praying. He hates you praying to God for any person. He hates you praying for their salvation, for their needs, and for these other things. So if you want things to shift in your life when you're coming under temptation, begin praying for the lost. Devil, you want to tempt me with lust or these other things in my life? Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be praying. I'm going to be praying for this person or this person or this person. That's fine. And as you begin to pray for those people, you will see that your mind goes off the things of this world and off the temptation and they go on to God, that which is noble. And instead of directing our attention to trying to resist in the natural, which is just so hard, we, we, we um, turn our attention and our affection back onto God. And living out of that place of intimacy causes us to grow stronger. And the more you do this, the more you realize you've got power over sin, the more you walk in freedom in sin. And that is the way that you overcome sin in your life. I know it might sound over, oversimplified, um, but try it out. Try it out. And if you struggle, come and see me confidentially if you want to. But I know so many people 
um, have had breakthroughs just by um, putting into practice what I say. So I hope this has blessed you. My, my desire is this will, will lead you into a greater um, revelation of God. This is the motivation. Jesus Christ is coming back and he wants all mankind to be saved. So if you're watching um, online and you have never given your life to God, Jesus is coming back. So I'm going to be truthful with you. I'm not going to sugarcoat the message. You've just heard it. Jesus is going to come back and the ungodly are going to be judged and the ungodly are going to be destroyed. End of story. And so you need to get your life right with God. I don't want to use that as the lure. Um, What I want to say to you is that God loves you and he died on a cross for you to take the punishment of your sin so that you wouldn't need to spend eternity um, in hell. But you could spend eternity with God, getting to know him better and experiencing the fullness of paradise. And we, you've probably um, experienced trauma and, and hardship in your life. And that's from the evil one. But God wants you to, 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 experience paradise where there is no more um, mourning that is you know there's no more tears there's no more sickness there's a place of just pure paradise and purity and holiness and this is what God wants for you and this is what I want for you I it's not his desire that you would perish it's his desire that you would come to know him so would you do that Would you open your heart to him? The Bible says to count the cost, to understand that when you do so, it's a decision that you make with the end in mind. That is right to the very end, that you're going to commit to this to this right to the very end. And I I just encourage you to do that. So if if you've contemplated that and go, no, I'm ready. I'm ready to give my life over to God. Um, Well, pray this prayer with me. It's a prayer of repentance. Remember what Jesus said, or what Peter says, that God is not slow in returning. He wants all to be saved, and he wants all of us to come into repentance. And that's what you're doing. You're saying to God, you're praying to God, "I, I want you to come into my life, and I want to repent. So this is how it goes. Would you pray this prayer with me? I'm going to close my eyes. You might want to, you know, just um, position your heart to God. Just begin to speak to him. Make a connection with him. You might just say, God, I I want to pray this from my heart. I'm, I'm serious today and I want to do this. Dear Heavenly Father, I'm sorry that I've lived life my own way. And today, I choose to live for you. Today, I choose to to follow the teaching of Jesus the best way I know how. I, I thank you so much for sending your son Jesus to die on a cross for me, to take the punishment of my sin. I thank you for that. Would you come into my life? Would you make your home in my heart? I ask you, Holy Spirit, to come into my life. I I want to be born again. I want to be completely changed, completely transformed by your power. Would you do that? In Jesus' name, amen. If you did that today, praise God and welcome to the family of God. I would love to, to send you a Bible. Would you just... Text my phone text my phone number with your name and I will send you a, a free Bible. I, I'd love to get you started in your walk with God. And you need help with that. So I can tell you how you can make a relationship with God. So my, my mobile number is pretty easy to remember. 0404 80 30 55. That's 0404 
80, 30, 55. Well, I hope you are blessed by this service and I'll see you soon. We hope you enjoyed the service today. And if you made a decision to follow Jesus for the first time ever, congratulations, because it is the most exciting decision you'll ever make in your life. In the Bible, it says that the angels rejoice in heaven when someone gives makes a decision to follow Jesus and we are rejoicing right alongside them. So if you made that choice, we're just going to ask you to send Pastor Lionel a text with the number below. And if you just need prayer or if you're feeling lonely and you need someone to talk to, please write prayer in the text message and send that to Pastor Lionel as well. We also want to give you the opportunity to make an offering if that is something that you're interested in doing. Below will be the bank account details and God wants us to give with a cheerful heart. He doesn't want us to do it because other people are or because we feel like we have to. He wants us to do it in faith and with a joyful heart. So all the details are below in the description box if you wish to do that. Also, at 5 p.m. today, if you have time, which you should, we have Pastor Emmanuel um, preaching for Hope Church 2505. So if in the YouTube box, if you just type in Hope Church 2505, you'll be able to find his YouTube channel. And so come along at five o'clock. A lot of us will be there. And yeah, he's got a killer sermon that we'll be listening to. And then finally... <laughs> We have our Zoom call like we do every single week. The meeting idea is I, I, the meeting ID is written somewhere here below. And if you haven't joined in yet, we really, really want you to because we're missing you guys. And we just want to connect in with our church family, talk about the sermon, talk about life. And we'll be separated into different groups, which is always exciting because you never know who you're going to end up with. So if that is something that you'd like to do, which it should be, <laughs> um, please just type in this meeting ID below at the end of this video and we will see you there. Bye.